Guys, we talk about the growth of women's basketball and the growth of women's basketball largely is starting in college. And we are seeing record after record after record being broke. We already saw um, 12 million plus watch on this past Monday as Iowa defeated LSU in the Elite Eight. Over 12 million, uh, the most watched women's basketball game ever. Uh, and that was phenomenal. Absolutely. We talked about that. We, we rejoiced in that. that. That was great. And then we up it. We, the game just keeps on elevating. And, guys, it is fun, 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 fun to watch. Okay, guys, here, here's, here's, here's the thing, guys. We had 17 million viewers at its peak for, for yesterday's game. Uh, yesterday, UConn versus Iowa peaked at 17 million. That's a lot of people. And, guys, this – the the number of people up uh, so so we, we had 14 14.2 million viewers on average on ESP. This is this game was bigger than any other basketball game on ESPN ever. This is not just about women's basketball. We have transcended that. We have transcended that and we are we are talking about basketball period and how these ladies are being seen by more people than the NBA. Like it, it's, it is absolutely crazy guys. This is, this is history. This is absolute, absolute history where 14.2 million people watch a women's basketball game. This is the most, uh, th this is so when when you talk about when you talk about um, uh, sports in America, right? It's it's football for sure. Then for the most part, it's basketball, right? Um, so so when we look at ESPN, they said that this is ESPN's second best non-football telecast ever because the football stuff those get the most the most ratings, right? And um, this is ESPN's second best non-football telecast ever. So so this is. This is like at the top of, for the, for the most part, like all time stuff. And guys, it's just, we, we got to celebrate this. We have, to, we have to celebrate the game of women's basketball and how we are continuing to grow. We're, we're continuing to level up and it's just, it's just special. It is so, 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 so special. Um, and as a, as a fan of the game, as someone who just wants the game to grow and get bigger and bigger and bigger, stuff like this is important. Stuff like this is important. Um, guys, it wasn't just that. Uh, we, we, we saw, yes, 14.2 million viewers for the, for the later game, Iowa versus UConn, but we also saw 7.1 million viewers for, um, for, NC State versus South Carolina. And that was great too, by the way. That that was that was a a, a great a great showing as well. Of course, not 14.2, but the fact that the fact that on average, on average, 7.1 million people watched a women's basketball game, and then right after that game was over, 14.2 million people watched the second game. It's just, you know, the game is growing. The game is growing. Guys, look at this, look at this graphic. This is the most viewed women's national semifinals on record, guys. On record. And yeah, it's just, yeah. We're up 138% year over year. When do you see, when do you ever see a stat like that? When do you ever, when do you ever, ever, ever see a stat like that where, where something is up 138%? Can you imagine, can you imagine, um, yo, yo, the size of your wallet going up 138% year over year? Can you like that type of increase in anything is just astronomical. But the fact that in one year, one year, we we hit those numbers. It's just, 
It's great. It is it is great, 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 great to see. Um this is uh the, the South Carolina NC State game, 7.1 viewers on average, uh, is the third best women's national semifinal audience on record. Um so so guys, we had we had over 12 million on Monday, this past Monday. We had uh, 7.1 million for the first game on Friday, 14.2 million for the second game on Friday. What are we going to get on Sunday? On, on, on Sunday, are, are we going to see 16 million people watching a women's basketball game? Are we going to see that? Like, it's possible. It is, it is very, very, very much possible. And I, I, for one, am here for it. I love it. Guys, we need to... We need to continue this on to the WNBA, um, so that way these ladies not only not only do they get um, the viewership that they deserve, but ultimately they get the money that they deserve because ESPN has gotten the best deal ever. Yes, we do have a new deal with uh, we we do have a new deal with um, with ESPN where where women's college basketball they re-upped. I made a video previously about it, um, and. The amount of money that they paid, yes, was record setting. However, it's now it's now basically a bargain. ESPN pay, paid a bargain to keep women's college basketball, the NCAA uh, tournament. They paid a bargain, and it's and, and now you're gonna have these other networks saying, "Hey, we want to get in, in future deals. We 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 want to compete. We want to compete for." The NCAA tournament, which means more money for colleges. It means more money for um, uh, uh, conferences. And ultimately, it means more money for the players in NIL and all that other stuff. Um, the growth of the game is great. Um, we, we, we talk about how important it is and, and how these players have been balling for years. Like This is not... Absolutely, our numbers are up, and it's, it's it's phenomenal. But also, let's continue to recognize the fact that there have been women who have blazed the trail for college basketball. And the reason why we are here, where we are right now, the reason why we are, we're here is because of Maya Moore. The reason why we are here right now with 138% year-over-year viewership, the reason why is because of Maya Moore. It's because of Candace Parker. It's because of Sylvia Fowles. It's because of Brianna Stewart. It's, be it's because of these of the players who have paved the way, the players who have have um, gotten recognition, but not the recognition that they truly, truly deserved. They were building. They were building something. Cheryl Miller, like all, all these players were building something amazing, and it just continued to stack on stack on stack, and, and now we're, and now we're reaping, reaping the harvest. Now we are reaping the harvest of what the the um the older generation have given us and it's 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 great it is it is absolutely absolutely great i hope i hope i hope that the wnba capitalizes on this this is an opportunity for you to get these fans 14.2 million people watch can we get 20 percent of those people let's just let's just be uh, uh, let's give a, a low ball thing and say that um, that 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 20% of these people um, will can continue on to the WNBA. Can you imagine how 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 many stadiums will be packed this year? Can can you imagine the um, the the amount of views that the WNBA could get this season? It is important, yes, absolutely, to talk about uh, women's college basketball, but where is the WNBA? The WNBA needs to be front and center at these games. Front and center. Because you need to build this momentum and keep it going. Um, you know, keep it, keep it going. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Let's 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 uh, let's acknowledge where we are with women's college basketball. Let's acknowledge it. Let's celebrate it. Let's remember that we didn't get here in a vacuum. There were people who were here before that paved the way. 
If it wasn't for Maya Moore, we would not see Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark idolized Maya Moore. She looked up, looked up to her. She she tried she 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 wanted she wanted to be like Maya Moore. And we're gonna have a new generation of players uh, uh, who coming up who want to be like Caitlin. Absolutely. Um, but it but it, it's and players who want to be like Angel, players who want to be like. Uh, Malaysia full wild, you know, all that, all that good stuff. But also guys always remember, re regardless of if you are new to women's basketball, maybe th this could be your first season watching women's basketball in earnest with women's college basketball. Um, it's important to realize absolutely cheer for, for, for the players that you know right now, but also it's important to realize that there were people in the other, like people who came, who came in front of them and paved the way. So so I, I think that is just so, so, so important um, for us to, to recognize, to celebrate absolutely the ballers now, but also the ballers of the past to where if they didn't do what they did, this wouldn't exist. If, 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 uh, if, if in the, um, if in the nineties, we didn't have that Olympic uh, women's Olympic team that um, played well and built momentum for a women's professional team in the, in the, in the United States. If it wasn't for that Olympic team, we wouldn't have, um, um, the, the, uh, the WNBA right now, we wouldn't have it. And if it wasn't for David Stern and others who pushed for the league to happen, who, who really, um, promoted, if it, promoted it and made and made it what it is. If it wasn't for the Houston, uh, the, the Houston comments, you know, if it, if it, these are the people who, who have helped to shape this game. And while we talk about the current players who are phenomenal, let's also make sure we're giving the older players flowers because they deserve it. Um, and, and it's just important. It's just, it is just, so, 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 so important. All right. Sorry, guys, for my little rant there. <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> um, Jimmy says, uh, have you ever been to a game in South Carolina? Uh, 18,000 um, seat Colonial Life Arena. I hope you can visit us. If not, Don Staley, Asia Wilson, Aaliyah Boston paved the way. Facts, 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 facts. Um, no, I have not gone to a, a South Carolina game. I really want to because I, I want to. I want to go to a UConn game because I, because UConn fans are very unique and have been rocking with their team for decades. I just I just love I love fandom. You know, I, I love it. I, and I I love to observe it. And I saw I saw I was able to observe it yesterday in the Final Four. But I would love to go to UConn to go to stores to watch it watch a game. I want to go to South Carolina. Um, to, to Colonial Life Arena to watch a game. I want to go to the PMAC at LSU to watch a game. I want to go to Ohio State and watch a game. I want to go to Indiana and watch a game. Like There's there's fan bases um, that I, I really enjoy. I want to go to Baylor and watch a game. There, there are so many like um, uh, legendary fan bases um, that it's just so great for the game of women's basketball. I, I, I want to go... And hopefully, hopefully when, when I get my coins up, when I get my coins up, uh, hopefully I'll be able to do some sort of like road trip type thing where I'm going to various games because it's just, it's fun. It, it is, it is fun to observe, um, how the game has grown in person. Absolutely. We talk about, it, uh, we could talk about it. We could watch it on TV and talk about it that way, but like also going in person would be really cool. So I haven't, I haven't gone. I want to, I want to very much, very much. Uh, Michael says a lot of W players are in commercials now, but a lot of folks don't realize who they are. Yeah, guys, it, it, I don't know if y'all heard, but uh, Asia Wilson um, said um, yesterday that that there were fans that were like, "You're tall. You should play. You should uh, you should play basketball." And it's like, man, and they were fans. They were they were they were fans of uh, of women's college basketball, but I assume they were newer fans because they didn't know who Asia Wilson was. And you know, th there's some education that needs to be done. There are, there is some education that needs to be done. Absolutely. Let's welcome the new fans. Let's welcome them because to me, the growth of the game is the growth of the game. To me, that's a great thing. 
Like I, I, I am not a person who, 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 who sees negative in that, in the onslaught of new people joining the, joining the, the, the tribe of like women's basketball fans. I, I see nothing wrong with that. That's not, that's not a problem to me. However, I do think it's important for us to, as new fans come, come in and they're like, yeah, I love the game. Angel Reese is the only player I know and she's awesome. And the game of women's basketball is phenomenal, but the only player I know is Angel. It's, it's important for us to say, absolutely, Angel is great. But also, you may want to look at Asia Wilson. You may want to look at Candace Parker. You may, you may want to look at Taj McWilliams Franklin, who was a very, very great basketball player. She was, at, she was actually at the game yesterday. And I was like, oh, that's Taj. <laughs> I, was, I, was a, I was a big Taj McWilliams Franklin fan. Um, you know, you know it, it's, it's important for us to, you know, welcome them in, welcome them in. And then tell them, well, have you heard of this person? Have you heard of this person? I'll send you some highlights, you know, and and, and get them get them acclimated to the point where, when they see someone not named uh, uh, Caitlin Clark in a commercial, um, when they when they see Arike Agumbawale in a commercial, they're like, oh, that's Arike Agumbawale. She plays for the Dallas Wings. She's a baller, you know. I think I think that's important. I, th I think that's important, and, th and that's going to come. But it's also up to us, as as um, as as fans of the game, and who have been true to this for a long time. It's up to us to help educate in a nice way, um, because I, I don't think everybody who's who's uh, becoming a fan now is like anti old stuff. I think they, they just don't know. I, th I think they just don't know, and it's important for us to you know tell them about it, educate them a little bit in a nice way. You know, and hopefully, hopefully that is what I, that's what I try to do on the channel. Um, I don't know if I always succeeded it, but that, that's really what I try to do. It's a, to make it, making the space of women's basketball a welcoming space for new people um, to, to know what's going on and to be educated about uh, the, the, the former folks who have really paved the way. Um, and also for the, for the current, for the, the people who've been true to this for decades um, to, to also be able to, uh, be able to chat as well. So hopefully that is what, um, that's what I'm trying to do on the, on this channel. Let me know, guys, if, if 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 I'm hitting that or whatever. Yeah. Anyway, um, as up says, WNBA players resent all the attention that that college women's basketball uh, are getting. I mean, I think that's possible uh, because it could be one of those things where they're like, "Well, why aren't we getting this?" You know what I'm saying? Because if if it's talent, if all you're thinking about is talent alone, absolutely, the WNBA should have uh, way more fans. Absolutely. But the thing that the thing that I think people that the WNBA still hasn't fully realized is that the the growth of women's college basketball, sure, yeah, it's about the talent. Yeah, the the, the ladies are talented, but they're not the first women to play basketball. They're not, you know, uh, at a different at, like co completely at a different level than the people who came before. I think it's just that we have hit the perfect timing of social media of personalities and of uh, uh, a resurgence of fandom that we're seeing. And these college players are benefiting from it. And I think it's important for, for WNBA players to, to, you know, um, not resent it, to embrace it and say, Hey, we're, we're, we're we, we may see an influx of fans this season who want to come and see Caitlin. You know, uh, the the Las Vegas Aces had to had to um, uh, they changed their their venue uh, for for their game against um, for their game against the Indiana Fever because the demand was so high. They like sold out and they wanted more fans to be able to come and come and watch. So they changed the venue to a larger venue so they can watch the games. And when we when we talk about um, you know, Caitlin being a huge driver and, and Angel and, and others being a huge driver for new fans. To me, that's okay. Absolutely. Caitlin, anywhere the Indiana Fever goes, is going to sell out. And fans are going to be flocking. And that's great. Because, yes, they're coming for Caitlin. Absolutely. They're coming from, for Caitlin. But they're going to see other players balling. They're going to come for Caitlin. They're gonna they're gonna stay for Aaliyah Boston and how and how ultimately how great the Indiana Fever 
team will sort of shape shape into being. Not not saying they're going to be great necessarily next year, but we're going to see flashes. Um, they're going to stay for, um, you know, looking at a player like a um, Arike Agumbuwale, and they're like, oh, she's a dog. She's good. You know, they're going to stay for a player like uh, Kalia Copper. You know, it's okay for 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 these younger younger players to get a lot of attention and and to bring people into the game, but people are going to stay because of the talent that they see in the league. Because the league, the WNBA is the, if you want to watch talented basketball, you're watching the WNBA. You're not watching college. College is great. I love college. I absolutely do. But, but it's, it's about the different narratives that, that the college game has and, and, and the, uh, the, the sort of, um, personalities that, that drives the W the, that drives women's college basketball. And as they go into the WNBA, it's going to, it's going to, you know, rise and tide lifts all boats. The WNBA is going to, going to, um, have an influx in, in, in support, but it's important for the WNBA to not just have those people, but to cultivate them as like lifelong fans, cultivate them in, uh, create some sort of education program. When you're playing the Indiana fever, maybe you're doing before the game, maybe you're doing a history lesson about the team. You know, if you are Las Vegas, Maybe you are doing a history lesson of before the game for uh, against Indiana. You're at this new arena that's larger. Before the game, maybe you're doing a history of the San Antonio Silver Stars, the different players who play for the San Antonio Silver Stars, how they morphed into the Las Vegas Aces, and why people should rock with the Aces. Maybe that's what you're doing. Same thing for the Chicago Sky. You're, you're telling a narrative that gets people uh, to understand that there was something that existed before. I, I think that is something that hopefully the WNBA uh, uh, does because it, you, so you can educate fans um, on, on what they should be paying attention to because it's great basketball in the WNBA. That, that's not the issue. The issue isn't that. The issue is just people don't know and they don't, they don't necessarily have an interest right now. But, but if, you, if you tell the story, they'll be interested. Uh, guys, if y'all get that like button, that would be phenomenal. JB says, with women's college basketball leading the movement of popularity, I think this year's class will elevate the overall WNBA following. Uh, the W player shouldn't be resistant to that by way of hate. I don't get it. I I, I agree. Yep. Uh, Kevin says, the WNBA is a great product. Caitlin and Angel, if packaged correctly, can usher uh, in a turning point when when the game fully goes mainstream. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. Zoro so says, uh, when they negotiate media deal rights, um, let's hope they do the right thing. I think they will. I think they will. Uh, Journey says, uh, we have to realize the women's uh, college basketball is in part popular because people's uh, uh, people attend and watch due to school time. Uh, sure. Sure, there there is a segment of of, of fans who 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 watch because they attended a, per, uh, a particular school. However, there has been a seismic growth in women's college basketball that had to me has nothing to do with where people went to school. Yes, sure, they have a base support, but also base support for a lot of schools doesn't do much in terms of actual like fan attendance. That maybe may get you a thousand, maybe two thousand fans in the stands. But what has been cultivated is is beyond school affiliation. It's it's a it's a personal connection that people have to certain coaches, to certain players. And to me, that is that is beyond school ties. And the, and it and and because of that, that could be used um, for the WNBA as well because it's not necessarily the school. It's the person that really drives the interest. Um, for example, Iowa. Iowa has so many fans now. Do you think all these people went to Iowa? No. They just like Caitlin Clark. So now they're a huge Iowa fan, you know? Uh, Nancy says, um, love the idea of educating on history of teams, league, and college game. Yeah, I mean, I I, I hope the WNBA does that. I hope I hope they do that. Alan says, Quit, I used to like pro only. Now it's colleges. It's more unpredictable in college. Pro just seems boring. I mean, because pro is the, that's the elite of the elite. You're not like 
when when you look at college, sometimes it, it is very unpredictable because some teams are like way better than others. And so with some teams, they actually know how to play defense on a star player. Um, and they're fundamentally sound on both, both offensive, offensive defense. And then you have other games where the teams isn't. And then you have someone just run up the score and score a whole bunch of points. So yeah, it is, it is unpredictable, but like the WNBA is it's, prof, it's professional. It's like, it's not as, uh, the parody is so is so close in in the WNBA that I under I don't think the WNBA is boring, but I understand people who say that because it is the elite of the elite. Like you you're not going to see blowouts like that in the WNBA. You're just not going to see it. Whereas in, in in women's college basketball, you see that because there are some teams that aren't invested in as much and they don't have um, they don't have a lot of the um, the resources that other teams have. So, yeah, you'll see crazy blowouts. In the WNBA, it's not the case. It, it is not the case. The WNBA is it is full parity, full parity, and it's the elite of the elite. It is the elite of the elite, and it's awesome to watch. It's awesome to watch. John says nothing beats the pros during playoffs. Yeah, I mean – I, I think so. I think so. Um, uh, hey, Darius says, WNBA is elite play. Facts on that. Absolutely. Uh, the best of the best. What's not to like? Can't wait for the season to start. Yeah, I can't wait either. I cannot wait either, guys. This is going, yeah, we're going to have a fantastic year of uh, of WNBA. Like, I, Yeah. As a as a as a huge WNBA fan, I am excited. Uh, yes, my Chicago Sky is not going to be very good. They're not. Uh, but we're going to watch some great basketball, and I am I am very much excited about it. Um, very 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 much excited about it. 